When, uh, when I first met Ted, he came up to me and the way he was, very, very uh, open and friendly and big smile on his face and talking like he knew me forever. And in fact, I felt like I knew him forever. And he came up and he started conversation. And uh, I didn't know anything really about him or his background or anything. So I asked him, are you from Charlotte? And he said, oh, well, you know, from here and there in the Pittsburgh. And then we started talking about Pittsburgh Steelers. And he was a big Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and so was I. So am I. And, uh, and we went on, and we, we started finding more and more connections. And he said, you know, he says, my family came from Syria. He says, but really, I'm Greek. <laughs> how, how, you know, and I was thinking in my mind, you know, did he have links to Alexander the Great, you know, or, or you know, something like that. He says, no, 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 he says, uh, I'm Greek, I've always been going to the Greek Orthodox churches, so I'm Greek. And I said, well, that's wonderful. And we started talking and I started explaining to him that what he was saying was actually true. Because... Greek is not really a proper word. It's not even a proper name. Uh, the only people that use the word Greek are in America. In, in the, the nation of Greece is called Hellenes. Hellenes. And the Hellenes does come, this term Hellene does come from the ancient Greeks. And the ancient Greeks in the, in the language of the ancient Greeks, Hellene meant universal. So anyone who accepted this thought of universality, that all people are the same, that all cultures have good in them, that all cultures and all nations have something, uh, some greatness of their own. This is what Alexander the Great was, was teaching as he was conquering the world. It was the Hellenes. It was anyone who accepted the good things of humanity. And Ted, in fact, was a Hellene of the highest order. He's the one who looked for the good in everyone. He looked for the good in everything. Ted was always positive. I've never seen him negative. I never heard him say a discouraging word. I've never heard him speak against anyone. It's always been positive. And that's the thing that struck me about Ted over our relationship. You know, sometimes, especially in my case, I have to humble myself because you know, we're human beings, we don't know everything. So I'm always looking to learn from people. And Ted was a wonderful teacher. He didn't even realize the things that he was teaching me when he was speaking to me. But you know how we all have little, little uh, gaps in our knowledge or, or little gaps in the wisdom that we have. And somehow we'd be talking and he would explain to me and then it would make sense. And one time he told me that there was a difference between being a leader and being a manager. Now this is very common. If you're in the business world now, you're probably going to seminars uh, and, and they're teaching you this. It says in order to be a leader, you can't be a manager. You can manage, but leadership is something above that. It's something special. It says the leader is the one who inspires the others. He's the one who gives the vision to others. And then they will manage to go in that direction. So he said, what I do and what has made me successful in business, and I'm going to take uh, the opportunity to say 
His success was not only in business. His true success was in life. But he says in business as in life, says success or um, uh, the leadership that we show is what's important. He says, in my world, in my business, he says, what I try to do, he says, I try to duplicate myself. He says, I can only do so much. I can do this much. But he says, if I duplicate myself, is now I can do this much. He says, I'm trying to duplicate leaders. He says, managers are a dime a dozen. And he said, leaders is what we need. And I thought to myself, wow, he says, that's a lesson that I needed to learn. That's a lesson that will serve me. And it has served me. And it has served the community of Sanitarius. He doesn't even, maybe now, he didn't realize how much influence he really had. As none of us do. If we say something positive, we don't know how far that positive word is going to go. If we say something negative, we don't know how far that negative word is going to go. It's like that <clears throat> the butterfly effect. You know, the fluttering wings of a butterfly and it creates a turbulence in the air which causes something else to happen causes something else to happen, then finally you have a full-blown hurricane. Well, it's the same way. And that's the way Ted was. It says because of his positive attitude, he affected the lives of many that he didn't even know. But because he was positive, because he was such a good person, is the people that around him and his, his immediate sphere became better people. And the people around them became better people. And it became like a domino. His people were blessed by Ted probably throughout the world without him knowing it. My friends, it says Ted was the ultimate example to us of how we should be. Now, I'm not going to say that he was a saint because I didn't have to live with him. <laughs> I didn't have to work with him. I heard he was a tough guy to work for. Is that right? Yeah. His grandsons are over here nodding. But, you know, what we say, there's an old story. It says, uh, and you're going to, please forgive me. It says, but the mother and the son were sitting in the pews and the, they were eulogizing the father, and they were saying so many good things that the mother said to the son, he says, go look in there and make sure that's your father in there that they're talking about. <laughs> I, I, know, I know there's more to, to Ted than, uh, than all the wonderful things we're saying, but, but he was a human being. And we all have the goodness, and then we all have maybe our harder side. But with Ted is what we saw was the goodness. And we say that a tree will be judged by the fruit that it bears. So if you ask me, says, what kind of a family man was Ted? I'm not going to say that he, maybe he was short-tempered, maybe he was tough on his family, maybe this. But if you look at his family, if you get to know his family, you will see the results of Ted in the family. He bore good fruit, therefore he was a good tree. Whether he was good or bad on a particular day, he says ultimately he bore good. Ultimately he did good. Ultimately he was a great man. When I have to say goodbye to good friends, I, I am grieved myself, but I, I really and truly, and I say this often, I really and truly look forward 
to the day that we will be reunited with Ted. When my time comes, I know that he's going to be there with a twinkle in his eye, with a big smile on his face, probably with a camera in his hand, <laughs> to embrace me and welcome me. I know that Ted is praying for us now as we are praying for him. And I look forward to the day that we will all be reunited in the great kingdom.